you go from a 10.5 to a 9.5, we're going to take off about two or 300 RPMs. Assuming you don't crown it or mishead it or skull right. it or something, if you make a reasonably similar pass, that difference in loft, that's easy. That'll take down 300 RPMs in a heartbeat. And I can kind of predict that beforehand. I can say, yeah, we're going to see, you know, over the average, we're going to see lower in spin. But I can't say, oh, let's stiff the tip of the shaft. Now watch this, we're going to see lower spin with that. I don't know what's going to happen. And it doesn't, I'm not trying to say shaft's not important though. I'm saying it is important, but it's important how you react to it. And then we look at how you react to it and see what it changes, how it changes. But you kind of want to, you kind of want to be pretty systematic when you are experimenting with clubs yourself. You want to say, well, look, let me find a shaft that is reasonably close to stuff I've liked before. So I'm kind of used to it. Like I kind of know what it does and I can make a normal pass at it. It feels normal when I swing. So I can kind of deliver it the way I, I usually do. And then let me isolate head. Let me and now with all of us, all of our manufacturers, we've got all these different head settings. You know, moving weight around inside the head. We can change the the cog assembly at the shaft to change the face plane, all that stuff. <laughs> Goof around with that. Figure out okay, that with a good pass with the shaft I like, that head produces the flight I want. Now you can go back and then go okay. Let me try some different shafts in this head that I know that I like. And then you can start to isolate which shafts you like better. Maybe you like a high torque shaft better. I mean, a lot of guys think they need low torque, and it turns out that even torque pros I work with end up liking higher torque. And it turns out they, they actually fade higher torque more than they hook it, which is the opposite of what people think. But it's hard for you to isolate what those shafts are doing unless you find, I, figure out what the head is doing, what you like. You have a baseline of flight you're getting, and then you can start to look, okay, let me try the shaft and see what it does to me. What is the shaft doing? Has a feel to me? Which one can I deliver more, and hit the ball more solidly? Even without looking at a bunch of squiggly lines on a graph, if you take one shaft and you start hitting the ball more in the center of the face than another one, that's pretty easy. You're, for whatever reason, you're agreeing with that shaft. Right. But it would be hard for me to tell you technically why you like that shaft. Whereas if your launch and spin is high and we bring the launch and spin down because I lowered the lot, that's easy to say. I go, well, yeah, I lowered the lot. That's that's why. But why you like a different shaft is, is that's that's more confusing. It's a more complicated process, an important part of the process, but not nearly as predictive. I, I would never predict beforehand what I would what a guy's gonna do with a stiffer tip shaft or a lower torque shaft or a heavier shaft for that matter. So that yeah, was a long get, explanation yeah, of shaft. We get on the forum is that you guys will talk about um, well, I'm hooking it or I'm hitting it left, so I need a stiffer shaft. Right. And you have to get into the wall, not necessarily. It's, it's like, you it's, might. You might. It could be it might different. be worse. Yeah. yeah. So it's, or, or guys, since I'm pushing, I need to go to a more regular flex. It's like yeah. the shaft, you know, right, it's, yeah. it's flexion all over the place. It's, right. You know, it's not just flexion in one direction to make, right. you know, so. Yeah, there's a lot of, it's moving through different orientations all the way down. Yeah. And it might be true that the guy needs a stiffer shaft, and he doesn't know until he hits one. Right? But to say, you know, blindly on the forum when you don't know, you haven't seen the guy swing, you don't know what he's yeah. done, we've tried different stuff to go, hey, oh yeah, absolutely, if the ball's going left, stiffen that shaft up and you're going to be golden. Go spend $300 on the one on eBay and put it in your club. It's like, n not necessarily. Go to a place where you get a chance to try some different things. Or some shafts you know are, are pretty specific in the categories. You know, okay, this the specs on this shaft are this. These are, this shaft is totally the opposite end of the spectrum. Let me hit both of them and kind of see what's happening. But what we used to do, you know, the way I explain it, I always wish I could say more about shaft and what's, what's going to happen technically. Like I could give you more of a cause and effect. Like this is generally what we see if we stiffen the tip of the shaft or we stiffen the butt side of the shaft. This is typically what we see, but it's really hard to do that because everyone's a little bit different. And it's not, it doesn't correlate according to skill level necessarily. Right? It's not like, well, better players do this with the shaft and then higher handicappers do that. It's not. It's across the board. We've done so much research on shaft to try to figure out what it is, what the cause and effect is, that you end up looking at all the data and go, wow, there's very little correlation and you don't know until the guy hits it. We used to do this, and we still do a little bit of this. We take a bunch of shafts that we just designed here and we produce here in R&D. And we would, we would, we'd have like maybe eight to 12 shafts that are all painted black. And one would be, everything's the same, but the torque's different. And then the next two would be, everything's the same, but the tip stiffness is different. And then the next setup would be, everything's the same, but the butt stiffness is different, right? So then we would, we would go through and we would have people test it. We would test it on robots and we'd have people here test it internally. And you know, you are a guru if you could like go out there and like pick everything out and like arrange it blindly, like just hitting balls. You go, oh, well this one's the higher torque and this one. The trick was like, the, the, the trick with the torque test was if you sit one on the toe and you could feel it give and you go, oh, that's the higher torque one. That's how you, that's how you cheated that test. But the tip stiffness ones and the butt stiffness ones and the weights were a little bit, if the weights were pretty close, that was a little bit harder. Yeah. And we would, the, so you would get a guy that was a 15 handicapper, right? He's an, he's an engineer, but he's a 15. He's not a great golfer. He's an average recreational golfer. He comes down here, and that guy, he's, he was, I, I, his name was Clive. Really nice guy, really smart guy. And he was, a, he was an a, a okay golfer, but he wasn't a pro by any means. Um, he could line the shafts up in order exactly, right? And I'd get tour pros in here that would have no chance. They'd say, and I, in fact, I'd get, we get some tour pros that'll hit it, and it's just we're letting them help us with our blind shaft testing. 
and we'll go, well, you know, this is not necessarily for your benefit, but it's for our benefit since you're here and you're a good player. We want to have you hit these a few and give us your thoughts on it. And you go, well, this one, whatever this is, can you guys build one and put it in my gamer? Because this thing feels awesome. We go, sure, it's a men's regular. And go, well, I can't use it then. Right? Even, but for whatever reason, the timing of his swing, maybe he didn't change directions really fast, didn't put an aggressive load on it, maybe it just works. It was just a magic formula for the way he synced everything up between his swing, his technique, and the club. And was hit really good shots with it. But once he knew it was a men's regular, in terms of, you know, free, butt in frequency is all it was, he was like, oh, I can't play it. I can't play it because I know it's a men's regular. So that's how shafts can get really interesting. You know, I can get to take a guy that has slower speeds, a higher handicapper, and he, you give him a whiteboard, which is just completely out of the range. I mean, you'd be laughed off the form if you told someone that was mm -hmm. a slow speed 13 handicapper that he needed a whiteboard. And he just pitch it right in the center of the face and kills it. And you give him one that he should like. So you go, well, you'll, much like, you'll like this one a lot better. You give him a soft, regular, high torque. And he goes, oh, I can't hit it at all. He starts necking the thing. You give him the stiffer one again, hits hit solid again. The ball speed goes way up. So it's weird that that's 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 relatively that doesn't happen. You know, that's pretty rare when that happens, but it does happen. You know, and so, but trial and error with the shaft and the head. You know, the head's a math equation. The head's easy. The head, you know, I mean, you can almost dial in mass properties are almost directly related to launch parameters because it's those two objects colliding with each other. And those mass properties, how those mass properties are orientated in relation to how the ball's hit and how it's delivered, that's, you can immediately tell what's going on with that. But what you're gonna do with the shaft, you're gonna stay back here and throw the head at it, or are you gonna, are you gonna drag the handle before you start down with this shaft? Hard to say, until you watch a guy hit it. So, very interesting stuff, but not easy to figure out all the time. There was a question sure. on the form about, so when you change, let's say you change the loft by two degrees or something, Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're changing the shaft. Mm -hmm. Then there's a group of people who think spinning or spining the shafts is important. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? You know, we've definitely looked into it. We've had uh, a number of people come by. We had, uh, you know, we had a guy come by that was talking to us and said that, and this was a while back, that said you guys really need to look into uh, splining the shaft or lining or, you know, controlling the orientation of the way you put the shaft in. And that that's going to have a significant result on, on the ball flight that you get. And we've, we've gone through a significant number of battery of tests, changing the orientation of the shaft to see if we can find anything statistically significant. You know, we get our engineers down here, they run tests on the robot to try to determine if, if a shaft, if the club is going to perform more consistently if the shaft's in a certain orientation. And we just, we couldn't find a correlation. And we've done it a number of times. That was obviously, you know, if you kind of, let's say that that technology was available for sale, right? And you said, we were the only ones that pure shafts or mm -hmm. spline shafts or spine shafts, whatever you want to say. If, if we thought it did something significant, certainly we'd want to capture that and say this is our stuff and we're the only ones that do it with our clubs. So we've definitely looked into it, if it was, and if it was an advantage, we'd look into trying to develop that or include that as a feature in our clubs. But when we can't find any kind of statistical significance, it doesn't make sense. Because obviously it would be an expensive process yeah. when you're mass producing clubs to make sure that every shaft is measured and then orientated a certain way in every single head. That would add a tremendous amount of cost to the production of the golf clubs, to the assembly of the golf clubs. If we thought it was worth it, we would do it. And we, we have no bias one way or the other. It, if anything, we like to see, we like to try to investigate things that might give us a competitive advantage. Yeah. Right? But we didn't find it that it, it had any kind of demonstrable change in the, the performance, so we didn't do it. Now, there are anecdotal stories out there. Like, I've had a guy come in, it was a very interesting story, and the way this guy experienced it, it would be hard to argue with him that it didn't help him to have his clubs shaft orientated a certain way. Is that he came in and said, well, this guy came up to me and I, he you know, he told me he could rotate my shafts, my shafts were in crooked, he was gonna put them in right so they perform better. And I said, I, I was skeptical, I said, I don't know, but you can try it, I'm really ready to try anything. And so he took them and he changed the shafts and he said that there's one particular club that was really out of the proper orientation, that the spine of the shaft was in the wrong spot and then it was probably my least favorite club. And so what he did was he wrote it down on a sticky note, the club, and he asked me what it was, and I said I hate my 7 iron, and he showed it to me, and it was a 7 iron. So in that particular case, the guy is really a true believer at that point, <coughs> because the guy said, "Hey, this was the one that you, that you don't like." That's an anecdotal story. It's not a significant. That's not a statistical analysis. So that guy, I'm sure, is a believer, and still a believer to this day. And the perception that they, that was that helped him was was probably good as well, and it probably made him help him make a better swing. But unless we can find something scientifically to back up. You know, especially when it adds a lot of incremental cost yeah. to the assembly of the golf clubs. So we haven't really found much. I don't know. What's your guys been experiencing? Have you 
What have you guys found? I, you've it, it probably heard make, a lot of believers and non-believers. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me, understanding the way, seeing stuff like on Enzo, mm -hmm. the way the shaft's moving, it doesn't make sense that, okay, if I have it oriented one way, it's going to... That it's magically it going to put the head in the right spot, yeah. or it's going to improve, and it's not a smart yeah, club, so, so much, it doesn't know where square is. Yeah, there's so, so much going yeah. on, we can't see with the camera. Right. You know, with the way the shaft's flexing, the way the head's drooping and stuff. I mean, on the front end, that's kind of, a, we, we would probably have made a similar argument to what you just made. Yeah. Is that based on what the, the forces and the torques you're applying to the handle of the club, and the force and torques experienced by its own momentum, why would taking the shaft, it was micro, microscopically thicker in one section of the shaft, orientating that, would it make it, it wouldn't make it break the laws of physics, so what is it going to do? It's going to be more consistent? How? You know, and right. better, what does better mean? Does that mean more square at impact? It doesn't know where square is. It's just being swung in space and it's acting on, it's acting according to forces and torque. So, yeah, we're kind of like you. Like, how could it? We'll test it. Yeah. We didn't see anything. We didn't think we would and we didn't, so. Do you guys have any other questions? Mike, you want to hit a couple, sure, of, yeah. a couple of drivers?